Fortune Cookie 45 LC coming to you from the Hot Lead Zone. And you've heard it said on more than one occasion now that the second most critical factor in leading prevention is the bullet hardness needs to be matched to the bullet velocity. Well, it turns out that we're getting a lot of frequently asked questions about the lead hardness of our cast bullets. So I'd like to thank TR Prepper and McLean One and also Voodoo 304 for the questions that are the topic of this video, which is lead hardness frequently asked questions. So the first question is what kind of relationship between bullet hardness, lead hardness, and velocity are you talking about? Well, let's go over that. If you're shooting cowboy loads or standard velocity loads, that's 850 feet per second for standard velocity, anything less for cowboy, then you need Brunel hardness number 12. Now, if you're shooting plus P or auto pistol rounds because you need to have good lead hardness to function hitting the ramp and going into the barrel, this kind of thing, you need Brunel hardness number 15 to 16. And the plus P will take you up to 950 feet per second. Now, if you're shooting anything above plus P all the way to full magnums, then you need Brunel hardness number 18. And that's good all the way up to light rifle velocity, which is 1,700 feet per second or less, Brunel 18. Now, if you're going to go to anything over 1,700 feet per second, up to about 2,100 feet per second, then you need Brunel hardness 20 to 21. And that's what we're talking about. Well, then the question is, why don't we just use Brunel hardness 18 or 20 for everything? Because with hard lead, we won't lead a barrel, right? And the answer to that question is, no, because if you use lead that's too hard for your load, the bullet will not obturate in the barrel. And if it doesn't seal the barrel, then those hot jet gases that blow by like a cutting torch will melt the lead and deposit that lead in the barrel ahead of the bullet. So you'll actually get leading if your bullet is too hard. It's actually better to be a little bit on the soft side because the bullet will obturate well. In fact, some of the old time shooters like Elmer Keith use lead that's softer than what we use today. And he never leaded his barrels. Now, we don't want to use lead that's too soft, though. So, what we talked about in the beginning of this question, that's about the right hardness for those velocity ranges. So, TR Prepper and McLean 1 and Voodoo 304, you're asking, how can I tell how hard my lead is? Do I need to buy a lead hardness tester? Well, it turns out that the first scientific measurement of the hardness of metals like lead was done by a man named Brunel in Europe around 1900. But what he did was he applied science to what was being done already and that is the old thumbnail pressing test. So what he did was he used a steel or a tungsten carbide ball and pressed it into the metal with a certain force and then he could tell by the indentation what the lead hardness was. And Brunel's work forms the basis of all our lead testers today that we can buy from various companies. But the cost is anywhere around $60 to $100 for a lead hardness tester. Well, we can do the lead hardness test thumbnail test instead. And that's still a very reliable test. Let me show you how that works. So here's one of our Lyman 525 pellet slugs, 12 gauge. And it's made out of pure lead. Now let's go ahead and do the thumbnail test. You take your thumbnail and you place it on a corner. 
and you push down until your thumbnail turns white a little bit and you give it a little sawing action. Now when you do that, do you see the little dent there? This lead dents easily, which means that soft lead, let's do that again, we'll just use this new area right here. Push into the thumbnail, thumbnail turns white a little bit, give a little sawing action, and then notice the dent that's made by the thumbnail. This is soft lead. If it dents that easily, you got pure lead, which is around Brunel 8.6. That's soft lead. Now repeat that same test with a bullet that's about Brunel Hardness 12 for our standard velocity loadings. You do the same test there. Notice we're going to pick that spot right there. Thumbnail turns white. Give it a little sawing action. Oh, missed it. Give it a little sawing action. And there is a little bit of a dent. So you see this lead is definitely harder than pure lead. But it still dents a little bit. It's a noticeable dent. That is good for standard velocity loadings. Now here's one of our 240 grain 44 caliber bullets and we do a lot of plus P loading in this so let's do a test for plus P and here you go can you tell it's a little bit less than a dent This is about Brunel 15. Now here's one of our Keith bullets and it's destined for full magnum loading. So let's pick out a nice place on a corner and do the thumbnail test here. Not a whole lot of difference between 15, but you can if you can look at that, it's it feels pretty hard. Like it doesn't want a dent. This is Brunel 18. Good for full magnums and if I were doing rifle up to 1700 feet per second rifle. Now the thumbnail test might seem a little crude to you, but it was very reliable for many years for casters and shooters before they even had lead hardness testers. And Brunel's idea of using that little ball and interpreting the indentation is nothing more than the same thing that is being done with the thumbnail test, just a little bit more scientific. But the lead hardness testers have their own problems. Sometimes it's difficult to interpret the indentation correctly. You're using a little microscope to look at the indentation, comparing it to a scale. And the interpreter might very well misread or mis misinterpret the indentation. So there's, there's no insurance, there's no assurance that the lead hardness testers give you any more accuracy than your own thumbnail does. So the next question is, how do I get the hardness that I want in my lead? Well, I know this may sound strange to you, but what you're looking at here is all the different kinds of lead you need to be able to make any hardness of lead that you need to shoot. What I have here is one ingot of pure lead made from dental x-ray foil. That's dental x-ray lead foil from dental offices. And I've got four offices that's saving me their lead foil. So I got a good supply of that and I melt it down and make these ingots and I mark them 100 because that is pure lead. That's where all my shotgun slugs are made. And if I were shooting muzzle loader, this kind of thing, 
I would be using this pure lead. Now I'm lucky, the range that I shoot at is almost like a paradise for bullet casters because all the lead that's shot by the uh, shooters hits the backstop and bounces down into the dirt and, and the lead is just sitting on top of the dirt is already pretty clean. Very little cleaning necessary, just go ahead and melt this down. So I go ahead and make these ingots of range scrap and what the range scrap is, is antimonial lead because by the time all the lead bullets are melted you get lead that has about 4% antimony in it. Well that hardness happens to be 4 points higher than plain lead. Plain lead is 8.6, add 4, you got Brunel hardness 12. This is Brunel hardness 12. It's perfect for standard velocity and cowboy loads just the way this is. So range scrap can go directly into making Brunel hardness number 12 bullets. Standard velocity, cowboy, maybe even a little bit into plus P. Now for our plus P's and our magnum loading, our light rifle, this kind of thing, we need to actually harden this lead up a bit. And the only way you can do that is by using lead that has extra antimony, extra tin in it. And so a good source is to buy these bars of linotype or these bars of super hard alloy from rotometals. Now linotype is 84% is lead and 4% tin, 12% antimony. Super hard is 70% lead and 30% antimony. Great for hardening bullets. And here's how you mix it. Now the best way to mix your lead is to use your Lee 420 pot or your Lyman pot or your RCBS bottom drawer pot, your final bullet casting pot to do your final mixing because it's very convenient. You know for instance that the pot holds 20 pounds of metal so if you want to put half full that's 10 pounds, three quarters full is 15 pounds, etc. You can actually use that to gauge how much metal you're melting together. So I'm going to tell you what's been working for me for a long time and these formulas are not well distributed. But anyway, to make Brunel Hardest 15 lead alloy good for your plus P's, take 15 pounds of range scrap or three quarters of your pot Add two and a half pounds of linotype, which is half a bar. Melt a half a bar of this into your 15 pounds. Stir that together, you got Brunel Hardest 15. Please note that we're also water quenching our cast bullets as they drop out of the mold to get an extra Brunel Hardness point. Now if you want Brunel 18 for your magnum loads, your magnum pistol, your light rifle, then the following formula is used. Take 17 and a half pounds of range scrap, add two pounds or roughly two-fifths of a bar of super hard. And if you do that, mix it together, you'll have 19 and a half pounds of alloy in your 20 pound pot. And that alloy is Brunel 18. Now cast, quench the bullets, you got Brunel 18. So YouTubers out there, including TR Prepper and McLean1 and Voodoo304, hope this uh, video helped you. Lead Hardness. Frequently Asked Questions. Bye for now.